vote. Uh, I think I spoke to you like on after the elections, right? Yeah, 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 that's right. And uh, I used to get into arguments with people over there because they were upset that Donald Trump got elected. <laughs> okay, so for, the, for those who haven't heard it, just give, give us your backstory and, and where you're talking about and, and all that. Okay, I, I, was, um, I was born in Honduras. And uh, actually, I went to Honduras after the um, 2016 elections. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to take a break. And then when I got there, people were upset that Donald Trump had won because they, for some reason, they have some kind of entitlement to this country. And I'm from Honduras. I am not saying I'm not disparaging my people, but I know my people. And uh, I used to get arguing with, I said, why are you upset about this president? That's not your president. You know, Orlando, you know, that's, that's his name, is your president. If you're going to be upset with somebody about your condition, it has to be with your president, not with Trump. You understand? So I used to get into these big arguments because everybody was upset, upset they were, um, you know, in um, it was a New Year's. He, they were burning effigies, the flag, and everything. So I was like, I was surprised that these people were so upset because right. I haven't been there in Honduras for like five years. So uh, I got to see a lot because, you know, um, actually at that time when I left the, the New York, I was living in Brooklyn, I almost felt that it was so, sort of the um, economy was dead. But when I got to Honduras, it, was very, it felt very vibrant. I was like, wait a minute, it's more light. I feel more alive. People buying, selling, and everything, right? Right. And I said, I was like, I was like, I said, like, wait a minute, I almost want to move here because it feels like more life, <laughs> you know, more life because, you know, everybody was selling and buying in the Christmas time, of course. Um, and I was like, wait a minute, this is so weird. We're over there, you know, um, the economy was tanking, you know, after, you know, Obama was coming out of office. And, it was like balls being built, uh, McDonald's. You have all this um, boutique uh, shops over there, opening malls, like two, three malls. And I was like, what's going on here? This is just so weird, right? Did you, because, did you ever figure out what, what's going on there? Well, I... I started, you know, I was questioning because I actually, my mom lived, you know, built a house in the suburbs, like in a mountain. Um, and she moved there because, you know, it was a lot of fresher because uh, San Pedro Sula. I'm from San Pedro Sula. That's where the caravan came from. I said, wait a minute, what's going on there? And I actually don't have too much contact with people there. Only my mom. My mom doesn't know much, but, you know, people talk. And uh, um, I remember that... Uh, I had to go with my mom. I want to give you an example how things are over there so you can gather background. I remember my mom had to change. Um, she had a, some, uh, she has some apartments she rents over there. And she had to change. Um, she had to cancel the electric um, you know, service. And we went to the office. And she said, no, you have to come back. You have to bring your, um, what do you call it, title of your house, your bills, and everything. Everything is just so proper. Like in here, I called a company. I said, I want to have electric service. I just come here and poke it up, right? Oh, Not is, is, is it um, like a lot of bureaucracy, a lot of paperwork, a lot of overhead? Yeah, well, what happened is, I'm going to give you this. What happened is, I always tell my daughter, there is a default state everywhere. Everybody has a default state. The false state in my country, in a lot of countries, is um, misery, like um, poverty. So everybody's taking from somebody, right? Everybody's taking from, either way. So my, my mom has some chickens in, in, the, in the neighborhood. I'm, I'm giving an example. And for some reason, they disappear. They never, you know, it was like nobody said brought my, my, my mom's chickens. So everybody's covering themselves because they're expected to be stolen from. You understand? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like so it's the kind of place like you can't leave your bike outside for 10 minutes because yes. it's going to go, right? Yes. So it's it's very like that. Actually, when I went back, you should see um, the houses. with uh, They look like prisons because they have the, what do you call the concertina wires? 
Oh, three they, levels. They, it's like in South Africa. Like they got uh, they got yes. high walls. Sometimes they have broken glass or 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 barbed uh, so wire on the top. They got uh, the the metal grills or yes. or bars on the windows. I mean, oh yeah, they, like it's you're surrounded by a bunch of thieving groups. crazy people. Yeah, so the, I'm giving you the background of actually how it is. And I don't understand. I think it's a, a lot of throwaway countries, actually. It's uh, I, I really don't understand. It's just this. I, I'm going to take from you because you love it. You know, you cannot, you don't have peace. You know, you have to lock up. You, you have to lock everything up. Right. So this is the environment that we have there. Even rich people, rich people that they don't even enjoy their wealth because they have to be, you know, with bodyguards <laughs> And um, the cars have to be, what do you call this? Um, I forget this car. You know, secure. The, the metal, the ha- you know, and oh, the glass. Oh, you got to put this. To... It's like the little clamp on the on the wheels and stuff like that. Because, you know, you, you turn around and, like, your stereo's gone. And, and, you know, like, everything's ripped out. And your glove box is yeah, open. Actually, and... actually, you will not see a park. I see a car parked on the street after, midnight, after like, 9 o'clock. You will not see it. <laughs> you can't park on the street. Now, I'm is that has that now. changed a lot from when you were younger? Yes, hmm. yes, it was. It's 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 a completely different game now. It has to do with the gangs because there's two ga- the rival gangs there, and so some people prefer one over the other because even the police, you know, they're like, it, "There's no police." It's just like actually they work for the gangs at night, or you know, it's like it's just so weird. Well, the, the gangs, the, the gangs kind of run things, right? I mean, it's it's probably similar to what goes on in Mexico, where you get yes. silver or you get lead, right? Like you either take a bribe or they're going to put a bullet in your head, and that tends to make people favorable to what the gangs want, right? Yes. So actually, uh, some people say I'd rather have the gangs than the police. It's just so it's just a weird thing because. Um, I don't really understand how they started because actually the gangs for me that I've been here, it was just too fast and furious. It's just, it was not even that organic. Wait, I, I, what do you mean? I, I mean, I get the references. I'm just not sure how to put it together in my head. Yeah, what happened is that the gang, I mean, usually when you have crime, it just starts a little bit at a time right here and there. But this is just like, it came out. It, it was not organic. It doesn't seem more to me. It doesn't seem organic. It seems oh, like it wasn't like a slow growth in crime. It's just like no, it's too switching much. the it's light just on, just fast. boom, right? Yeah, it's too fast. Okay. So people studied. You know, um, I do remember what I used to when I came here. I came in this uh, uh, to the states like in the eighties, and I used to romanticize. I want to go back because people were like more, you know. It was a, sort of like you romanticize. When you leave your country, you romanticize about what you left back behind. Oh, yeah. And no, so I, I, used to I know say, the feeling. I know the feeling. Yeah, it's right. And then so you, you want to be here, but you want to be there. It's just so weird. And then so I remember I used to say, oh, when I was, oh, when I was, you know, when I went, let's say I returned after like 10 years. And after 10 years, everything changed. The gangs, the people were so different, more materialistic. Right. Yeah. And so I think everything started because, like, like I said, I said in the um, in the um, email that I sent you that a globalism is part of the reason this is happening also. And on top of that, uh, money, look, drugs, cartels, um, because um, actually, I don't know if you know, uh, uh, remember, like what, four months ago, they closed down a, a bank in Honduras. Uh, this guy was laundering money left and right from the cartels. And actually, he's here in New York. Um, you know, so they closed banks and a lot of companies that he had. But the point that I'm trying to say is that when I went back, there's a whole bunch of malls, you know, and I'm talking about well-built malls, you hmm. know, like, uh, well, like four, there's like four malls. I'm like, where these malls came from? And then there's a whole bunch of people buying and selling in the malls. And I said, um, what I noticed too was that there's a lot of groups, like consortiums of businessmen. They form these groups. They call them groups. You know, they get all together and they say, we're going to build this, we're going to build that. And I remember I went to um, find out something about property. And the office of the city office, you know, the property um, records, it was in a mall from the city. Hmm. 
And I said, what is this, what is this city uh, office doing in a mall? And I'm talking about whole floor. And what happened is that the, the, a lot of people, you know, with this money laundering, they get into these groups, right? Uh, business groups, consortiums, right? Yeah. And then they build a mall. And then these same people want to rent in the mall from the city. You know, they they, they go run for, a, a, what do you call, majors or councilmen. And then it's like a whole, it's like a business. Like It's basically like here, like a corporatocracy. <laughs> There's yeah, not yeah, too yeah. much. Yeah. So a lot of the money has to end up in sort of semi-honest places. So they yeah. try and get it in through real estate and, and this kind of mall building and that kind of stuff, right? So that's uh, what they're trying to do. And that's, I guess, where a lot of this sort of new real estate stuff is coming from, right? Yes. And so the point that I'm trying to say that globalism and all this money learned, because they have made properties go high, you know, like like in Costa Rica. You basically, I think people can't even buy their own property. Like uh, people who were born there can't even pay property too much in Costa Rica. Because since you have a lot of people moving in and buying property, you know, you already have the high, high bar of value. And so a lot of people are just renting or um, squatting, right? Yeah. So what happened is that I think that there's a new marketing that came, came there because I know that marketing people, marketing is just very hard. So what happened in marketing is that they paint a picture of um, you can get this. And actually, I, I, when I was there, there was not even credit cards. And now there's a lot of people getting credit cards, right? Hmm. Credit, I don't even know how that works. Somebody's pushing some money through. That's what I'm saying. And it's, it doesn't seem organic. It doesn't seem organic to the country. Well, and it's, I'm sort of thinking about... The soft border on the south of the United States, as we know, there's fentanyl and, and opiates and, and lots of drugs coming through from these cartels through this open border in the south of the U.S. And I'm just wondering if some of the drugs or the drug money is originating from or coming from Honduras or has some relationship to it. Because if you say it's changed a lot, well, what's changed the most over the last 20 years, say, in America, is the border has just basically collapsed. It's a walkabout thing. Yeah. With, I mean, they've they've got, but well, they're apprehending like forty thousand people a month, a month crossing this border. That's just the people they apprehend. Who knows what the numbers are that they don't? Yes. Yeah, so and I'm just wondering if it has something to do with this open border and just drugs flowing in and then being bought by people often on the welfare state money and so on. And that's just where a huge amount of money and opportunity is being scooped up. That's feeding or fueling the Central American gangs. Yeah, I I just read in the newspaper a while ago. I, they were closed. They were closed. A lot of those, um, what do you call those uh, air air strips, clandestine air strips. They yeah, closed yeah, like yeah. A whole I don't know what they're called, but I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, the air strips. You know that where they land. And I remember I that time when I went to Honduras because I was watching. You know, it's like I seen everything is just so different from five years that I didn't go. I you know, I used to travel back and forth. Now I don't because everybody's here from my family. And so I remember I went to, um, I don't know if you ever heard this, um, the Mayan ruins in Honduras. Uh, we have an, uh, um, a cousin over there who told me that uh, the major over there offered him a job because he has a truck to carry things, you know. I'm thinking drugs. So it's like a, the politicians are basically they go into politics because somehow they have access to money from the government or from the, you know, from the taxpayers and they use um, the police for the benefit, for drug, everything. It's just like a big corruption. Now, what, what has changed though? What has changed the most, do you think, for the average person in Honduras? I mean, there's a reason why I've heard estimates from 7,000 to 14,000, even more. There's a a reason why people are willing to try and make this trek. So how do you think life has changed from when you were little in Honduras to now to the point where people are just freaking out and bugging out? It has to do a lot with the, uh, I say, internet. It has to do a lot that um, um, people have come in a lot, and, and when they go back, they go in flaunt, like they're rich, and mm. they're like, 
you know, they rub it in and then people are like, okay, I want that too. And a story that I wanted to tell you is that I know my mom lives in a, you know, in a mountain. And there's a lot of poor people around her. And if you go and see those people, most of them have the latest phone. Huh. I even, I didn't have my latest phone. It's like, I don't care about phone. But if you go and see them, they live in a rickety house, but they have the latest iPhone, the latest Samsung. Oh, and they're watching like music videos and saying, that's paradise, which I can see that it kind of is, right? You know, but you know what? There's something also there. Because I just like two weeks, I was talking to my mom and I was reading the Honduran newspaper. And in the capital city, they had an office. Can you believe this? I was like, wait a minute, what is this? They had an office of the migrant office, I call it, somehow like that. Because in that office, this is probably where the, this caravan started. There is an office there, and I said, what is a migrant? Because in there, they tell you about what benefits you have as a migrant here, immigrant. It's called the immigrant office, and I was trying to find it before. I said, let me find that paper two weeks ago in the, in the newspaper. I said, what the, why is there an office there to tell people the benefits that immigrants have in here? Do you understand? Well, it's what like do they mean? Do they mean immigrants? Because that's a very lengthy process, right? It's like a decade or whatever, right? So, do they mean immigrants no, to the U.S. No, or do they mean just show up at the border and claim asylum? No, I'm talking about I'm talking about illegal people who are here. How are you can hide you to know your rights? Basically, some people are already there telling you how you can, you know. Manage the system here. Do you understand? Oh, yeah, no. I mean, there was a pamphlet some years ago that the Mexican government had about, you know, here's all the things you need to do if you're apprehended at the border. You can ask for this. You can ask for that. You can get a lawyer. You can demand this. And and yes. uh, I guess this is the same kind of thing. Yes. Okay. And so okay. this, I saw it, to, like, I, I had to find it. And I told my mom, I said, Mom, do you see, you know that I saw this article? I Once in a while, I try to, you know, take a peek of what's going on over there. And I said, why is this office, is there an office in Tegucigalpa, the capital, um, telling immigrants that they should go there and then they can l learn about the, uh, the, the rights. That's what they said, their rights as an immigrant in the States. Except they're not immigrants. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> they're not immigrants. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, whatever, you know. Aliens. When, so when they be illegal aliens. Why is they touch ground here? If they, even if they're here and they touch ground here, these are your so they already come educated from there with you know how to manage the system. And also what to say, right? What to say right. to make sure like I'm fleeing persecution, not I want a job. Yeah. So okay. yeah, and so So there's I all these manufactured stories that yes. are handed well, so out, these sort of like choose your own adventure books where the end result is being able to stay in the States. Listen, listen, uh, 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 Stefan, we know, like, even people, if you talk to, well, you wouldn't be able, but if I talk to a Latino, they would know, they would know by what's going on, re the reality of it. Yes, there are people there that are really, you know, they're like, okay, I wonder, I mean, when they say, uh, because a lot of say the American dream, I say, what American dream? We're going there for the American dream. And I don't want to disparage people coming for a better life, but most people, I know the immigrant of the 80s or 90s is not the same immigrant, whatever you want to call it, hmm. of today. It's not the same. And we, even when I talk to people, they say the same thing. Because all this um, globalization, you know, because by now we were supposed to be under globalization under Hillary. We're supposed to have no borders. So all these people get educated from that time. Like, all this, you know. Oh, they were waiting. This is why they got so mad about Trump, because they were waiting for Hillary to just throw yes, wide the borders and yes, say, come on in. Yes, they already, because in the schools, I really don't know. I, I wasn't there, but in this, there's something about these people were so upset when Trump won. I was like, I was like, what, why are you upset? Why are you upset? Do you understand the bigger problem that we have in America for you to be upset? over here that Trump won because he, you're not going to be able to cross? Because some people say, well, I'm going to go to the States. Like, it was like next door. Like, they were going to Walmart. Hmm. I'm like, why you do that? Because they feel entitled. Do you understand? It's an entitlement right. that a lot of people have. Now, but isn't and, there um, isn't there any kind of thought about the american taxpayers maybe not being so keen on on funding all this stuff or is it is it well the the gringos took the land from us and we're taking it back no, i mean what's the thought no. pattern here 
listen, listen, I, I was watching YouTube because I'm like, well, let me see what these people are talking about. A lot of people are talking about that um, it was Trump, even even in Mexico, in, in Honduras, it was Trump who created this. <laughs> oh, my God. The Trump who created what? Oh, yes, Trump who created the problems in Honduras? Yeah, yes, that's what they're saying. And I know they were saying it here, but I was looking at this guy, even from Mexico, you know, people from, from Mexico, there's people who do YouTube videos, like it, they look like journalists for sure. They would say, no, this is Trump who created this caravan for political polit political purpose because in November 6th, everybody knows about the elections. And guess what? Even in the newspaper in Honduras, they're talking about Trump can't do that because of posse comitatus. I'm like, oh, my God, there's people in the newspaper. Oh, Can so in the newspaper, they're saying, well, Trump can't deploy the military. Yeah, the military. The well, I, I think that he can because it's if you consider it an invasion, which I think it is, then he can yeah, use the military. The whole point of the military is to keep people from crossing your borders. At least that was the original point. So saying he can't do it, he can't deploy the troops against American citizens in American soil, as far as I understand it. But yeah, if there's an invasion, he kind of yes. can. So but my point is that somebody in the – because those, those, those papers are liberal. I could tell that. Oh, you, you know, mean the, the Honduran newspapers? Yeah, most of them are because you know it's the same owners of the groups that I'm telling you. All this, all this is like a big net. It's just like a you know the Hillary Clinton and Obama. Everybody just knows each other. You could tell it's just the same people. The same people here, uh, you know, are probably if you will ask me, they will probably be Democrats because over there in Honduras it's the same political system. We have the liberals and we have the Republicans in their own country. Yeah, in their own country. So, you know, they, they, and then even all these people are like, wait a minute, why are you telling Americans that we should feed these people? Are like, the country's a sovereign country because they say that their country's sovereign, but America is not. I'm like, wait a minute, what is wrong with you guys? Why do you claim that America is a sovereign country for some reason? It's like, um, like you just go to loot, you know? Right. And I get upset because. Why do you feel they feel entitled and even the people that are having you know, a commentary on YouTube? Why don't Trump just let him in and just let him eat, you know, and then just have him keep him there for like a few and then just send them back? Like, are you out of your mind? <laughs> well, I mean, if you look at Colombia's reaction to all the Venezuelans pouring across the border, yes, they're not very that. happy, are they? No, that's that's what I say. Listen, you, but you see, I, I don't know. We have a saying in Honduras, you know, uh, when you tip the hat, you want to tip the hat with somebody else's hat, right? That's what we say. You know, like when you say hello, you say, you know, I gave you this. You want to say, I, you, you, you know, you give him that. But I said, well, why don't you invite him to your house? Invite a few of them to your house and feed them. Like, oh, yeah, right? it's called virtue signaling, which is where you want exactly. the government to so take care of people, but you're never going to put them up in your own house or spend your own money. Yeah, and then I, I see these people because I'm like, wait a minute, this is just to me, this is like a phenomenon. And I went to the Hunter, you know, to Honduran YouTubers, and this guy is like, I know my people in Honduras. Being poor, this is I'm gonna tell you how it is, um, uh, Stefan. Being poor in Honduras is worse than death. It's like you are like a piece of crap. Mm -hmm. That's because I used, you know, I, I I lived there, I grew up there, and so the rich people treat you like you are just. You, you, you know, like a doo-doo, yeah, really. You know, and I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt, but, but this is something that I've seen in Latino culture, and I don't want to put it all in one big blob, but it sort of reminds me of some aspect of, of Indian culture as well. It's like really materialistic. If you have the money, you're a big guy, and if you don't have the money, you're nothing. And that's kind of different in the West as a whole. Yeah, and so what happened here, This is I'm going into the sort of the psychology of it. So what happened and like, you don't want to feel like crap. Then you want to get, you know, the get a, you know, the get a fabulous turn, right? Oh yeah. 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 It's yeah, when you, right? you've got so, all your money uh, in, in unproductive status symbols and not things that actually will make you money in the yeah. long run. Because somehow you don't want to feel like a piece of crap. So you don't want to, you want to be toe to toe with the rich people. At least, at least I have a phone, right? At least I have a phone and look, I can, I confront. I mean, a lot of people, I tell you a story. I knew my friend. I, I, I grew up, we grew up together. And I, when I went this, this year, you know, the kids had the latest phone, but they're about to get evicted. <laughs> do you understand? I do. This I is, do. The, this is, I'm, I'm trying to give you the psychology. It's, of the it's like the sneaker coming. thing. It's like, I, I don't have food, yes. but I've got some really great yeah, kicks, you know, like it doesn't. 
of the projects here, you see Mercedes Benz. Why are you living in the projects? Right. Right. You understand? Yeah. Well, because you want to show off to people, right? You want to show off to the people you grew up with. Yeah. So the, a lot of the mentality, I'm not saying everybody because there's always exceptions, but the mentality that I see of these people, that's what it is. Get a fabulousness. Right. Because actually, you know, I was reading a, 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 an article. You know how many people left? 47 people left their jobs in Copang. They, they were they were doing those uh, the expensive cigars. The guy was saying, wait a minute. Not everybody's starving to death like they're claiming. 46 people left the company to come to the caravan. They, wait, left they their quit jobs. their jobs to they join the caravan? Their jobs. 47. 47. <laughs> I, I, just went I shouldn't to... laugh because it's terrible, but that's insane. But, no, but but do you understand? Do you understand that that's the mentality? Because somebody told them, and they want to go to California. Do you understand? That's where they want to go. They don't want to go anywhere. They want to go to California. They say they want to go to California. Why? What's the reasoning there? I mean, obviously, it's nicer than Minnesota for the weather. But what's the reasoning for for what's the reasoning for the, California, Sarah? The government, the governor of California. You know. Everything free, free school. Oh, the sanctuary cities, and we won't turn yes. you over to ICE, and we won't cooperate with the feds. And they already know. Shoot. All these people know from there. <laughs> and I haven't researched a guy. His name is Ireneo Mus. Uh, I haven't researched the guy because I think it's the same guy who brought the caravan up here. And so I, I, I told my mom that this was, um, you know, Soros usually, but. They always say, uh, like, you know, like when so when they want to make a um, some kind of operation, they say, "Who do we have there in Honduras that can help us with this?" Right? So I know the opposition, you know, because I know the president who said uh, Orlando said, "Okay, the opposition is the one who is egging this on." And yes, I could see that. I could see that because well, he, he's when more I went conservative, to, though, right? So he's saying that it's the no, leftist Orlando, opposition, yeah, like the, the, the your equivalent of the Democrats, who's egging it on. Yes, yeah. the guy who's the um, he actually he was running around with Chavez. That that should tell you a lot. Oh, he's the one God. who was running with Chavez. Right. You know who that is? Do you remember the coup? The the um the Celaya, the guy who they took out of the presidency? Yeah, yeah, in yeah. In two thousand nine. Yeah, yeah. That's him. Okay. <laughs> that's him. That's him who is he I'm sure he 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 he's the one who had because even they just had the elections like a year ago. It was the same thing that he created with the Democrat mobs here. He, he They said that they would not let this guy govern. So they, they just created this big mess all the time. Like uh, he lost the election, so he's not going to let him govern. Basically, well, it's the same thing that they're doing with Trump with the Russia conspiracy yeah, theory exactly. and the investigations and all that. It's like, okay, you can win, but we're going to try and cripple you as much as possible so you can't get anything yeah, done. Yeah, so... He wouldn't. He wouldn't. He had a uh, protest, just like in here. Same thing. Uh, I, I, and I think that uh, he probably has some connection with the Hillary thing. Because uh, I think they wanted to make the whole Latin America, Venezuela. They had like the little group. So they, they wanted to do it. Look, look at Nicaragua. <laughs> look at Nicaragua. Nicaragua is going to hell now before it was even better than Honduras. Well, Nicaragua you've even got a lefty just... in Chile now, right? I'm sorry? I think there's even a lefty, uh, this woman who's in charge of Chile now is more on the left than... I really don't... I, I haven't... But I know... I know um, Evo Morales. What's his name? Uh, not Ecuador. What's the other? Bolivia. He's got a leftist big time. You know, they... they, they so there's like a... a they're, they're, this is supposed to have been like a... a, a you know, peppered with uh, leftists, Chavis, Chavistas. Yeah, yeah. Right? Everything free. Everything free. Everything was free. You know, the same thing. The same thing, uh, Stefan. It's just, you know, in the proportionate, of course, to the country. Right. But now, do almost... they ever think that if everyone from Central and South America, Central and North America goes into America, that they're just, it's just going to turn it into Honduras 2.0? But it's true. I tell, you know what? I moved to the, I moved to out of Brooklyn because I said, it's a state of mind. It's a state of mind. Being, um, Latin, you know, born in, it's a state of mind. You keep this mentality because I, there's a mentality that you, you, you're born with, you're born in poverty. But even if you, when you come to America, you are, you don't try to get away from your own people and see, okay, what is America about? Because I did it. And actually I moved to the suburbs because I said, wait a minute, 
I want to know what this, what Americans do that is so different than what we do. Because if you stay in the group, you create another, like you say, a 2.0. 2. You're not doing anything different. You're with the same people doing the same thing. It's just like you might as well say, uh, you know, stay in Honduras. Well, because you're not going to get a lot of welfare and health care and education in Honduras of the same quality, right? You no, know, you're not even close. Yeah. So my, my point is that once you hear, then you, your mentality should just shoot to, to American. To like, what are these people doing that is so different that we cannot do there? That's my curiosity. I'm like, wait a minute, there's something here, and I'm still because it's a state of mind, and it's in your DNA, uh, Stefan. It's something weird because even I am trying to figure. So I hear I bought a fixer upper, and I'm here. I like, I want to get away from anybody that is because I want to immerse myself into the real culture of people what people american people are like right because you don't get a taste if you're talking to your friends and every, you, you don't get a taste you just might as well stay in honduras except that it's like a little satellite honduras here <laughs> right well you know but okay but here's the thing right so i've seen studies that say i think we touched on this last time we talked sarah but i've seen the studies that say that the average iq in honduras is like in the low 80s now if you're a smart person, obviously a very smart person, if you're a smart person and there's just not quite as many smart people around as you'd like, it can drive you a little crazy. And what you want to do is you want to escape to some place where there are more smart people around, more curious people around, so you can have better conversations, so you can have a sense of a future, and so you don't have everything stolen every time you put it down, because that's kind of like a low IQ uh, yeah. a behavior. And and. I just wonder how many, like after years of emigration from Honduras, from Guatemala, from other places, I'm just not sure how many, like one of the things that happened is the West, like North Canada, uh, uh, Europe, the United States in particular, kind of scooped up all the smart people from Central America. And I'm just not sure, like in terms of like what's happened to the society, I'm sure there's a lot to do with the drug war and there's a lot to do, the foreign aid is really, really bad. The remittances are really bad because that way the governments don't have to, face the needs of the people. In fact, the government want to ship everyone to America so yeah. they can get remittances coming in. But also, I think that just more and more smart people have left these countries. And, and who's left behind? Well, not anyone who can run it very effectively, if that makes sense. Well, no. Actually, there's a lot of people. A lot. Actually, the people that leave the country are not... Because if you're well off over there, you, want, you don't want to move. I thought you, actually, said that you said earlier that they didn't really enjoy their wealth because they got to worry about being wrong no no time. yeah but but still but still you know what happens because even my brother uh one time he he's you know he's american he was you know he came he was born he wasn't born here he came my, my mom you know brought him brought us through through visa so he grew, he basically grew up here he went to high school here uh no he came he i think he came here when he was 13 in any case he said he wanted to go back because in here you're a nobody but in there, you can flaunt your wealth, whatever you have, even if you know, you know, proportionate. And then people sort of look at you, look at, look at, because actually, when I, when you go, I, I remember, I just like, wait a minute, what are these people looking at me? When you go to a place in Honduras, this is so weird. People live is very weird. The first thing that they look at you is your shoes. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> because they're trying to get you. They're trying to get you. Huh. Because by your shoes or the way you carry yourself, they gauge you because they say, okay, she has money. But this, I'm telling you, Miss Stefan, this is just so weird because I even used to do it, you know, when I was there. But I, I felt because, you know, once you live here, you have this different air to you. And so the first thing that they look at you is your shoes. And they start, they start scanning you from the bottom up. Hmm. Yes. Because of the get of fabulousness, right? Because it, that... They, they gauge you to see how they're going to treat you. You get it? Yeah, yeah. So whether you are someone who can give them an advantage or whether they're, you're not, in which case they'll just kind of ignore you, right? No, because of, it's, a, it's a, sort of like a caste system. It's, it's in a DNA. It's, this is nothing that is people met. It's just how it is there. Like, he, he, as soon as you come, I remember I went to the doctor's office and everybody just, you could feel people scanning you from the shoes up. Right. And it's like, yes, yeah, seriously. <laughs> but this is not just this, not just here. This is just all Latin America. This is I'm just, I, I'm I'm giving you sort of like a sample. Yeah, that's how it is. And so it, it's it's this mentality of 
if you, you, you know, you just want to place yourself where you are. If he has nasty shoes, ugly shoes, okay, or he's like me, she's like me. Do you understand? You want to see where you fit within the whole um, society by gauging you. And it's a quick gauge. It's not, you know, stare. It's just like, you basically know. So what happened is that it's the same thing of Get a Fabulous this year. It's like when you want to wear your $300 Nikes because that's a status. You understand? It gives yeah. you status. So this is why you want to be get or fabulous. Even though you don't have the money, you want to, when you pull out the phone, you want to make sure people look at it because, you know, it's like, okay, you know, I'm not like you, you, you're door poor. You know, I have the phone at least. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's it's no just, point having a status symbol if nobody sees it. Right. Yes. You, so you have to rub it in. And this is what happened when people come, go back from here to there. So this, and this is why you have this caravan coming because a lot of people, you know, when you hear people, oh, I, this is what they say, right? Well, I hear people, you know, the government takes care of the babies over there, blah, blah, blah. So they know. You understand? Because if you're, if you're over here living off the government, you have to rub it in. You have to throw it back somebody else. Oh, the government's paying me. And so people hear all this. You, you get it? People hear all this, but they don't understand that somebody paying. When people say, oh, they should let the, the, the caravan come in. and free, Like, do you know who's paying for all that? They think it's just the United States. It's just so they they have a pot of gold somewhere, and they <laughs> it's just magic. It. Seriously, it's, it's, it's magic. That's there are unicorns talk. that crap gold yes. directly into the Federal Reserve basement, and it just gets yes. shipped out without causing any inflation whatsoever. It's magic. Yes. When, you hear, when you hear these people talk, they don't they don't ever think that people are paying taxes for this. No, or whatever. You know, it's it's the it's the people. No, they for some reason when you hear them talk, they say that's a rich country. You know, what the hell is you know, why they why can they why can they give, you know, what they have? It's like, wait a minute, these people are working to pay. And they don't, you know, a lot of Republican people, you pay taxes, they don't even they don't even want to bother with welfare or nothing. They'd rather starve. Two, three jobs, a lot of them. You know what I'm saying? Right? Yeah, yeah, I got yeah, to yeah. Now, do you think this has anything to do with the midterms? It's hard to escape the timing of this, that these, you know, these yes, these I people said, who claim said, to be walking, but every time I see them, they're sort of stopping to walk for the photo ops, and then they're jumping in a flatbed truck and racing towards the border at 80 miles an hour. So do you think this has, like, it's going to put Trump in a difficult position for the midterms? Yes. they. Th as soon as I heard that, I said, oh, my God, it's the midterms. <laughs> Is the minister stupid? I said that even when I have a Twitter. It's like, oh my God, is it is a uh, is a midterm, right? right. Because and then, you, and then you have a like, are you coming to work with two three kids? Usually, when people come to work, they leave the kids behind because they're coming to work. You have two three kids, you're not coming to work. <laughs> what are you coming? And pregnant? You what the hell are you doing with kids? You're coming for an anchor baby. Yes. No, you're not coming. And you know what? And, 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 and what happened is that even when I was there. And I I get I used to get into arguments with people. Yes, there are poor people and there are, there are people who need, right? But look at these people who left their jobs, and that's probably just a few of them, right? They they left their jobs because they heard about the American dream. And the American dream is the welfare. That's their American dream. It's the American dream for them, the American nightmare yes. for the taxpayers, right? <laughs> So I like, uh, come on! And a lot of it, it, when I comment on YouTube videos, a lot of people like like my because I'm like this. I like I want to tell it to you up front. I'm not gonna have even when I have my Twitter account, you know, I have I, even Trump was talking about nationalists in my Twitter account. I say I'm a Latino nationalist. I'm proud of it. Who you're like? Who cares? Because that's how I am. You're like, uh, you know what? Come here and tell me that I'm, they used to tell me you're a racist. I don't care what you call me. I used to tell them, who cares what you call me? I'm just telling you what it is. You know, I used to go to a fabric store and when Trump, because I got on his train, right, right, as soon as he, um, I read his books, like um, like 10 years ago. I, I don't remember too much, but I did read them. And I was like, oh my God, this guy. And so I remember I went to a fabric store in Brooklyn and, you know, he was he was talking about, oh, what do you think about Trump? I said, I'm voting for him. I said, what? The Spanish guy. <laughs> what? He's racist. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? He's racist. Why, he doesn't have a right to defend his country? He doesn't have a right to defend his people? Why? You know, because that's what I said. I wish, uh, they probably wish a president, they had a president like that. I'm like, you wish you had a, why don't you get your own Trump? Right? He, basically, it's like some kind of jealousy or something. Not jealousy. You know, I know what, I know that why they're crying no, about. I mean, Trump's, I Trump's election, for a lot of people, as you know, Sarah, he just stands between them and the free stuff they want. 
So they don't like him and they call him names, but it's got nothing to do with yeah. an objective analysis of his idea of race relations. It's just like, hey, that guy's standing on my lottery ticket. I want him to move. Yes. I'm going to yell words at him until he moves. I can pick up the lottery ticket. I even got into, I actually, I even got into an argument with my friend because I was like, listen, listen. I left my umbilical cord in Honduras, I said. I left my umbilical, my, yeah, I, I left it there, but this is the country that fed me. I mean, who am I, who am I gonna defend? If I was there, I'd probably be, you know, coming in the car, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but my father raised, you know, he, my father was very, uh, I, I don't know, maybe also, cause I, there's not many people getting married, especially people, poor people, the, most of the people that are here, they don't get married. So they they live like, uh, you know, marriage is like something very strong. Hmm. The people that get married are people that are like higher class. People, poor people don't get married. So that has a lot to do with the mentality. It's just like anything goes, whatever, you know, who cares? So it's like, it's, it's just weird. I was looking at, nobody got married over there. Like, I don't know about here too much, but nobody gets, I didn't see people getting married. They just got pregnant and stuff. Oh, yeah, right? and I was reading this New York Times thing about this girl coming across with her husband, and she had a, she was, what, 17? She had a two-year-old son? So, she, I mean, she had the birth yeah, of 15, no, she got a, pregnant when she was 14. It's like, she's not coming to work. No, it's a, it's a, it's um mayhem over there. And every, and the thing is that they, they take the cue from Hollywood, from all these artists, from Mexican artists. So, they all want, see, you know, everything, it's just like here. But over there, they want to copy everything. So, you know, a, a lot of people having surgeries and all this. Like, like, wait a minute, why do these people look so weird? But it's they just want to copy. They just, it, I call it ghetto fabulousness. Yeah, yeah. It's just, not, you know, this is, you know, you just want to copy because you want to know that you're in style. And a lot of people don't have the money. Right. You know, they go. And, and, well, you used to just have to compete with the other people in the neighborhood. But now with the Internet, you've got to compete with everyone. In the whole world, you know, if, if you're a good looking person, maybe you used to be the most beautiful girl in the village and and that was wonderful and you were like the queen of the village. But now you've got to compete with every single beautiful person in the universe because and every single wealthy person is right there on your in the palm of your hand on your cell phone. And it drives people a little crazy because we used to just have this local competition. Now the globalism is you can see how everyone lives. You can see how everyone has opportunity yes. and you just can't stand it. Whereas before you wouldn't even have known. Yeah, and then and, and I was noticing too. It's just that um, the, you have this you know, boutique style um, things coming up with it. I said, wait a minute, what is? Who's going to be buying all this stuff? Because and and then what happened is is, is I always call it ghetto. Oh, you mean in Honduras this uh, boutique style? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's boutique style, like uh, cookie stores. Like right now, they just open a meat store. They just sell high quality meats, and I'm talking about, uh, uh, you know, from Japan and all. I'm like, who's buying this stuff? You know, and I then guess, it was uh, people, hot. people with all that that nicely laundered money. Now, yes, what do exactly. you uh, do? You have any predictions about? what might happen i mean that's that's sort of the big this is the big october surprise right there's always one and if this doesn't work i guess the next one is these these mailed out bombs and stuff but what do you think is is going to happen i mean they're obviously pretty committed to getting in i mean they don't make these kinds of journeys uh, without a really strong desire to get in right well no Stefan. there's a lot like i, I was reading that 3400 people went back 34 but there's oh, a few they've already that turned around but they'd be replaced yes, by more, I assume, right? Because I can see the picture. Yeah, because you know what? And Trump, this is what it, this is. I, I this is what I'm telling you. What Trump is trying to do? Do you remember when Macy's they had like a protest in Macy's last time, and then Macy's uh, took the merchandise. He was um, oh yeah, Trump the had ties, right? Like like they 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 cut his ties that they were selling the Trump ties. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So what he said is that don't worry, they're gonna get tired, right? You know, they just there for a little bit and then they get tired. You understand? Yeah. That's he knows that these people are just because they're going to get tired. Like right now I was looking at it. There's a lot of people like tired. Right. And so what happened is that. And probably they, these people are there's a lot. There's some of them like two or three. There's I think the two caravans coming like, a you know, like a relay, <laughs> relay caravans. Oh yeah. My God. There's one that started and but then the there's I think a smaller one. one but yeah. 
But Trump is expecting these people to get tired and they're going to thin out like last one. But since these guys learned from the last one, I think that they're going to have like, you know, come on, let's go. We could do it. You get it? You get it? Yeah. So we're not, they're not going to reach all of them here, especially, you know, th there's like, a, I think there's like a thousand of them that stayed in Mexico because there's, you know, their qu request of asylum and they, they stay there. They, I think Mexico gave them asylum. And they're going to thin out, hmm. right? Because you come in with all, you know, and then you, you just start missing people. You're sleeping on the streets. And I'm, there's, they said there's, there's some of them sleeping in hotels and stuff. Like, what? What are these people getting the money from? You know, they're staying in, in hotels and I see people giving them food. I said, yes, I know. I understand that people want to be uh, like a lot of Christians, right? And yeah, a lot of people help are. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think that somebody's paying them to give the food and then you, all of a sudden you have this picture, oh, they're getting fed, you know, by the people. But I think somebody's, you know, let's give them some food. You know, I, I'll give you $500, give all these people some food or whatever. That's yeah. what I think. This is my view, right? But in in the, the newspaper, oh, you know, uh, you know, the Mexican people are, you know, empathizing with the Spontaneous outpourings of generosity and yeah, yeah. No, no. Let, I'm telling you something. We Latinos are very, like, pirañas. Seriously. I am say, and I'm Wait, not can, saying... Can, I mean, can you break I, that out for me a little there, sister? Pirañas? What, what, what are you talking about? Pirañas? Uh, Bring this down for me just a smidge. You know what? You know what? If, uh, as, you know what? I wasn't even... I'm a veteran. I haven't spoken, I haven't spoken Spanish in a long time. Uh, English for a long time. And so I have this thick accent. Piranhas is the fish that eat each other. The the fish that oh piranhas. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I, I get it. I got it. No, that's that's not your fault. It's because I can't speak Spanish, so I got no problem with that. That's fine. We we okay. we actually you we are the first one that tear each other apart right, first. Okay, okay. Because we know what it's not even that is that we know uh, a con when we see one sometimes you know i know there's some people that are you know i see the guy i saw a guy over there being interviewed he's like yeah when i could tell that that guy he could very well come and work hard whichever way he came through but a lot of them just come for um probably working uh, as a dealer because i had a neighbor my mom had a neighbor you know, I told you my mom lived in a lot of, you know, she built a house in the mountain and there's a lot of people that squatted over there. They took land. Mm. So this guy was saying, well, I have my friend. I think I'm going to go to the States because I have a friend over there who's working, you know, selling drugs and he, he's doing very good. So I think, I'm gonna, so you understand uh, there's all kinds of this little plans, right? Even uh, get from the government or do whatever kind of business, you know, side business or anything, but work hard. There's a, probably a few that are come. You're like, okay, I really want to go, you know, build a house because I told you that globalism had made property prices in Honduras very expensive. Even I go, I'm like, let me see how the prices are. And then these guys are selling a, a house for a million dollars. I'm like, when the hell are you gonna get a million dollars for that house? Because somebody. Laundering money, you understand? Yeah, yeah. Somebody now, hang on. So, what would you say? I mean, if if you were Trump, right? What mm -hmm. would you do with this problem? With the caravan? Yeah. Uh, no, I would just turn him back because I think I would turn him back because I told you that the immigrant of uh, today is not the same immigrant of 20 years ago, even ten, probably 10 years ago. It's not the same. I think after all, not Obama, but after, I think they've been, they've been getting school or since people have been going, getting through with no consequence, you get spoiled. And so you get entitled. You understand that like when you spoil a child, yeah, you get entitled. And so I think, what was it? I know you asked me before, what do you think it's going to happen? Oh, I told you that they're going to get tired. But uh, some of them are going to try to jump it and probably going to have like a little, um, in the border, they're going to have like a, a scripted, something scripted. You understand? Like kids. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the audition of your life, right? To know what to say. Yes. Yeah, because uh, that's what you can, basically that's the reason, right? Nobody, these people don't care. You know, all these people that are, I seen this guy uh, on, on a YouTube channel. Oh, my God. Why is Trump doing that? Like, and I see him 
you know, like I said, we know our, our people. So I see him. I could tell, like, I already gauge him, you know, like I already scan him. <laughs> I say, he's a niño bonito. He's like a rich guy. Uh, yeah. It's like a Hollywood people, right? A virtual signal. I said, <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Have you fed anybody in Honduras over there that you're talking that we should feed them? No, you won't even feed anybody. These guys were not giving a piece of bread to nobody over there, you know, driving in their um, uh, Infinities or, or Lexus. Actually, didn't I tell you that they look like a they look at you like a piece of crap? Do you understand? <laughs> right. Do you understand? And these are the same people who are saying that we, the, the United States, are supposed to you know feed all these people. I'm like, how hypocritical. Let Nobody me ask you this too. I mean, so there are these stories. This this idea about Honduras or the data it seems to be that Honduras is like really violent at the moment. Have you heard much about this from your mom or from, from other people that you may know back there? Is this something that people are experiencing? I mean, you talked about the, the stealing earlier, but the violence as well. I've heard quite a, a lot of stories about that. Well, this this guy, uh, the new president, uh, you know, he's got reelected, actually. He's like a Trump over there in the, you know, in a little way. He's the Republican, let's say, right, of Honduras. He's the the right the right wing. He built, actually, he's the one who kept the crime under control. So while these people talk about, oh, we're running for crime, I don't believe it. The problem that he has done, I think he has taken, this president has taken some kind of book from the Obama era or something. He probably read some kind of book. He's overtaxing a lot of our regulation, so a lot of people can't even start their own. That's for sure. He ruined a lot of people. Because I know I hear a lot of people, even when I was there, I'm like, this guy was welding, his dad died, and I said, what are you going to do with the company? Well, you know, I don't want to start anything because this guy is asking for too many papers, you know, uh, to start a business. Remember I told you when I went yeah, to the office? Yeah, I remember that, yeah. So they killed the pay bureaucracy. You know, it's a lot of, because he wants, he's overtaxing people. I think the tax over there is like 15%. 15% for sale tax. Right, right. And so he's overtaxing people, so... He's a, he he overwhelmed these people with taxes and overregulation because I know he took I know uh, when I went there I said wait a minute why is this, this country smelling like Obama era everything is regulated out of you know it, he's overregulating so a lot of people don't even st can start their own business you know people little I'm talking about small business so I'm reading right here right now. Look at this. So it's, it's doing something because I know Trump put him to shame with, the, you know, we're going to take the, the the aid, right? So right now he's saying he's going to create 1,500, uh, you know, uh, he's going to 1,500 jobs. Right. And he's going to start fomenting the small business. You understand? Yeah. Because the opposition put him to shame because, you know, they keep laughing at him. And, yes, he overtaxed people. And he's been doing, like you were asking about the crime. He's been actually, I don't even know who's building these prisons because it almost looked like a, American prisons. So I think he brought, he went, he came and brought some architect or something because he's like, he built like five prisons. So the crime is not as high as even my, my mom says. My mom says, no, this guy has, the crime is a little bit un under control because, you know, he, he, he created new laws for, you know, stealing. They used to get on the buses and steal from people on the bus and, yeah, you know, yeah. kill the and all this mess yes it's true but now he's keeping it under control hmm. so the problem the big problem that i see on this caravan is i call it ghetto fabulous caravan <laughs> because that's actually the problem the ghetto fabulousness because they want to live up to beyond their means i'm, I'm trying to think you know? if i dare name the show ghetto fabulous caravan um <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure. Listen, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna call, call it there. But listen, will you? Will you keep in touch if you hear more information about this? It's gonna be such a big story over the next couple of weeks. Uh, I'd really like to stay in touch if you find out more information or get more information about it. Uh, if you could uh, keep me posted, I'd really, really appreciate that because I do want to keep people informed about the stuff that you know your your expertise, your language skills, your cultural skills give you access to a bunch of stuff that a lot of my listeners don't have access to, and I'd really like to help bridge that gap if that's all right. Oh my God! Uh, did I help? I don't know. I feel like I I was all over the place, uh, Stefan. It's a big story, you know. It's it's a big story. So I'm I'm glad to get a lot of different perspectives on on what's going on. So, yeah, I hope you'll keep in touch if you get new information. Let Let's talk again before yeah. the midterms and and keep people up to date on on how you see things. 
Okay, Stefan, nice to help. And I hope I, I think I don't want I want to make sure I don't want to disparage, but there's a lot of stuff like that now. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate I'm, this perspective. I haven't seen it anywhere else, and that's what's valuable about these calls. So stay in touch and thanks so much for the call tonight. Thank you. Take Thank care. you, Stefan.